at a house in Marcy where we just recently completed a full insulation project. This is a Cape Cod that was built in the 1950s and they've been struggling with inconsistent heat, hot summers, cold winters, and really bad ice. When we first came into the home, all of the areas that we were talking about, the pockets of a Cape Cod, had either a really tiny, thin fiberglass bat that was original to the house, all the way to nothing. And it was allowing a lot of heat and a lot of cold into the house. So what we did was we removed some of that insulation to give access to the roof deck. We were able to roll down the insulation on the side walls so that the roof deck foam could be a complete seal to the walls, as well as a complete seal to the top plates. This house is a little bit more complicated than most Cape Cods because it has an extended porch that's actually combined with heated space, which really opened the space up to cold and heat. But it was uh, more difficult to define that space, so we had to actually create some false walls to separate the cold of the porch area and the warm of the, of the crawl space that's above heated space. So now, the space we're in is conditioned, which means it's the same temperature as the rest of the house. She's gonna utilize this for storage. She doesn't have to worry about the hot and cold moving into the bedrooms that are uh, next to it. And on top of that, we're gonna reduce her ice significantly. When we're doing a house like this, we have to be really conscious of some of the strange pockets that occur. Um, this is a roof line dormer area that looks really pretty from the outside, but we had to cut into this space to open up so we can gain access to this roof line. You can see it's at a different angle than the rest. We also have to make sure that we do all the walls and we connect those things so that there's not a seepage point where heat or cold air can get in. So it's really important to know the full dynamic of the roof line connect them all so there's not a weak point, but these valleys are where that ice buildup was a really prominent problem for this homeowner, and now we're not gonna have that problem anymore. One of the things that you might have noticed about the spray foam is it seems like it's really white. Uh, that foam is actually yellow, but we cover it with a white paint, and that's because foam by nature is a plastic product and it can't be left exposed for fire reasons. So we cover it with a white paint that gives a 15 minute thermal barrier which is essential in providing protection for fire in a house that has an open space like this. If it's accessible, if they can use this for storage, it must be painted to protect the homeowner and it's actually a requirement by code. So whenever you see one of these kinds of spaces, it will always look pristine and white for that reason. On the other side of the house, we find a bathroom that backs right up into this cold crawl space area. Whenever we find something like this, we're always concerned about the comfort of fiberglass being backed right up to a really cold surface, um, obviously causing issues in comfort and using the bathtub and using the shower, and also the water lines that are right available to potentially freeze and cause problems. So by doing this application, we're not just helping with heat loss and comfort and ice dams, we're also gonna make using a bathroom much more enjoyable. This homeowner has been in this house almost since the day it was built in the 50s and has been dealing with excruciating heat issues, cold issues, ice issues, and she finally made the decision to go forward and make the difference in her home. The 50% program is what did it, and it's not going to be available much longer. So if you think you might qualify for the program, or if you have a home that you're uncomfortable in and you're ready to make that change, give Standard a call.